Mahendra. Thanks for coming. I'm Sarah McCabe, stage name Hendra, and I am researching open mics. When I moved to London from Canada, I didn't have any connections in the London music scene outside of my master's degree. And it was through open mics and free platforms that I was able to connect with other creators, with these connections stemming into future collaborations and paying gigs. Open mics and DIY sharing spaces have been vitally important to my career and I feel that they can be used as a tool to create community engagement by arts institutions. I'm in the first year of my research, doing the observation and participation phases. So the questions that I'm currently looking at are, what do open mics and other collaborative DIY platforms provide for emerging artists? And in what ways do open mics break down barriers within the arts community? The Barbican Guildhall Creative Alliance has an aim to create arts without boundaries, and so a part of my studentship is focused on investigating how these platforms could be used as a bridge between the DIY art scene and arts institutions. By the end of my thesis, I hope to articulate how open mics can be used in both practice and principle to support a programming policy of arts without boundaries. So, what is an open mic, and what makes it different than a programmed concert? For the purposes of my project, I define an open mic as a platform that has minimal entry criteria that is open to performers and public for little to no cost. Open mics are generally not fully programmed ahead of time and open to last minute fluctuations in performers. So the beauty and challenge of an open mic program, much like a poetry performance, are that no two events unfold in exactly the same way. Marcus Aldridge, who studies on open mics in New York have been the backbone of my readings, talks about how the open mic removes the backstage area from performance. Traditional concert halls have spatial distances between participants and audiences that perpetuate formal hierarchical structures. Performers emerge on stage from backstage areas not accessible to the audience members and often leave through private doors without interaction with audiences. Aldridge says, the open mic provides and represents greater accessibility to previously restricted backstage locations erected to protect and elevate the prestige of particular musical and performance professions and genres in the 20th century. Having a shared space for dialogue is invaluable when it comes to discussion of collaboration or potential creative opportunities. So practically speaking, since there's no backstage area at open mics, participants can be reached easily post-performance. Performers move spatially from crowd to stage to crowd, and as they do so, from the role of listener to performer back to listener. This allows us to frame open mics through another lens, a unique relationship that open mics have with audience-performer relations. In an open mic, the bulk of the audience members are participatory members of the event, so the boundaries of audience member and performer are blurred. Often the MC or producer of the open mic performs as well. So unlike your traditionally programmed concert, within the same social context and activity, the role of the cultural producer or creator of music is also performed and filled by the role of the cultural receiver or audience. So how am I going about my research? Oh, I see you now between the trees as the sky reflects in your eyes. My research is autoethnographic. 
It will offer a creative practitioner's perspective to arts policy, community engagement, audience development, and issues of inclusivity and diversity. To center myself in the research, I have been attending open mics both in person and online during the COVID-19 crisis. I find these open mics in the way any open mic performer would. A combination of word of mouth and Google. Performers I've met at open mics have pointed me towards others. Some open mics have found me. Usually I'm both a cultural producer and a receiver. I play my own songs and I listen to others' creations. Take note of the thoughts he conjured. Skin to skin means more when the heart is sure. Or empower your soul with a touch of gold. I'm also looking at open mics from a creator's perspective. As part of my Guildhall Barbican studentship, I will be pitching and hopefully programming open mics at the Barbican Center and related venues. This summer, I was planning to host a queer open mic during the White Cross Street Party, but COVID-19 got in the way. However, this week, I hosted my first online open mic as part of the 48-hour Neukölln Virtual Festival, which I helped to organize this year. These clips are from that performance, posted here with the performer's permission. As I create and perform, I use reflexive writing in an attempt to capture the moods and feelings of the open mics. I will weave theory throughout these descriptive writings to form the core of my thesis. I also plan to interview other creators and performers about their experiences at open mics. I'm doing this alongside a comprehensive literature review of performance theory and arts policy. Not even love will hold me. Why do I think open mics are important? According to the current Arts Council mandate, let's create. While talent in this country is everywhere, the opportunities to use it are not. Currently, the opportunity to establish and sustain a creative career is unfairly dependent on personal background. Open mics can take many different forms. They can be spaces on a campus where marginalized groups can both speak about issues meaningful to them and celebrate their art, such as the Black Student Spoken Word Nights documented in the book Open Mic Nights, Campus Programs that Champion College Student Voice and Engagement, or celebrations of queer creators such as Ina Kleine Queer Music at Guildhall in 2017. They can be spaces to use artistic responses to heal from trauma, such as the queer women's online open mics hosted by the Pride Center that I have been attending throughout quarantine. Open mics are also spaces where those who are fighting injustice can feel heard and encourage others to fight with them, which can be seen most acutely right now in online open mics during the Black Lives Matter protests. Open mics can provide a space for emerging, amateur, or marginalized artists that struggle to find platforms, as they are stages that do not rely on connections in the music business or monetary transactions. Recently, online open mics have given creators in quarantine a place to have their voice heard when their usual platforms had to close down. They can build and strengthen artistic communities, and they encourage artists to connect and collaborate. Ironically, COVID has created the opportunities for performers to join open mics from all over the world, and some beautiful international communities and collaborations have been formed. Moving through emotions so quickly. Sounds like there's a lot of cycles for a lot of people I'm hearing, like, maybe a cycle of emotions that restarts and repeats. For a lot of people. This can be shown by an event that happened just two nights ago. Like I mentioned, this weekend I hosted my first online open mic as part of a virtual festival. It was fairly small, as open mics need time to gain traction, but I was very excited by the wide range of cross arts participants. I played some of my own songs. There was another musician called Songs for the Tide, a poet, a storyteller, and a dancer. Liz Tan approached me through a mutual friend and asked me if she could do a collaborative call and response improvisation, sourcing responses from viewers in the comments. Liz asked those watching in the comment section two questions. What have the last three months been like for you? 
And how do you feel right now? With me as the orator of the comments, she interpreted the answers into a dance. When the audience saw what Liz was creating collaboratively, thoughts and feelings came flooding in. Somebody says, everything is spiraling down, but I want to expand. I love that. That's how I feel. Yeah, I really like that. Spiraling down and wanting to expand. I've never witnessed anything like it before, but I hope that I will witness it again.